Hi, I'm Arsham Shaibani, anterior segment and glaucoma surgeon at Washington University in St. Louis. We'll be demonstrating the use of the disposable gonio prism from Katina here. This case was a patient with mild open angle glaucoma. We initially inject a balanced salt solution and we're trying to identify these collector channels. So you see that there's a striated vessel right there in the center beneath the cannula. Uh, you can see um, laminar flow between the, the aqueous and the red blood cells. And this is a spot that we're going to want to target our, our eye stent. So we mark it on the cornea with a pair of Calibri forceps. And then once we, we fill the anterior chamber with a uh, dispersive and then cohesive viscoelastic agent in the area that we're going to work. We make our temporal clear corneal incision and then we place the viscoelastic on the cornea. We then rotate the patient's head away from us and this is Katina's disposable gonio prism. The optics are excellent with minimal glare. This is important when we want to target these eye stents because we really need to identify the tissue that we're placing the stent in and this video is excellent in demonstrating that. We approach the uh, trabecular meshwork with a 30-35 degree angle and once we feel like we've placed the stent in the Schlem's canal we then release uh, on the injector and as you can see here once we release it the stent looks a little superficial now many people might leave it this way however uh, I personally don't think that these stents are going to be as efficacious in that setting so we use a pair of micro graspers here um, we're going to reposition the stent within the lumen of the canal again this is all viewed through the gonio prism as you can see the optics are actually very very good for this type of maneuver now you can see the stent is well seated I'll show you a before and after photograph because this is before and you can see how superficial the stent is although it's in tissue and this is after it's well seated behind the trabecular meshwork. We then rotate the patient's eye back to ortho. This is again a Catino instrument. It's the Inamira forceps. They're self-puncturing rexus forceps. I really like them uh, for a couple of reasons. One, there's less instrumentation to come in and out of the eye and they behave very very well inside the eye. And if you look superiorly, you'll start to notice that there's reflux of blood coming through that eye stent and the angle in which we placed it. That's an excellent sign. We're going to hydrodissect. And then, again, another Katina instrument here is the Milder chopper. This is my preferred chopper. Uh, it's a combination horizontal and vertical chopper. It um, has kind of a flatter blade with a, a sharp front tip to where it's great for even divide and conquer surgeons. We're using here a hemi flip technique. After we make our initial um, chop, we take out the hemi quadrant at a time. This uh, chopper is great for elevating pieces uh, as well as performing vertical and horizontal chop maneuvers. It's bladed uh, a little wider to the point where it can kind of rest against uh, nuclear fragments a little easier for divide and conquer surgeons as well. Once we remove the initial uh, hemi-nucleus, then we turn our attention to the other side. And this is my preferred FACO technique just because it minimizes the amount of chops and maneuvers inside the eye. We remove the second hemi-nucleus, and again, uh, we're able to emulsify this nucleus fairly easily after just doing uh, one chop. And the, the Milder chopper, again, it's, it's great for uh, all types of surgeons, and it really is my preferred chopper. After we remove the epinucleus and cortex, we then maintain the chamber by injecting the viscoelastic with the irrigation off, but this way it doesn't shallow as much and cause uh, reflux into the anterior chamber where sometimes you can lose the view. Uh, we then place the intraocular lens, it's a folded um, acrylic intraocular lens into the capsular bag. We position it with uh, just a 27 gauge blunt cannula. And once it's well seated, again, if you look superiorly, you start to see the reflux of blood uh, coming through that area where we inserted the eye stent. And it's important that we note this reflux of blood. Again, this is an area that we targeted. We remove the blood and the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. And if you look just under the cannula, again, you'll see a, a dart of fluid going through that channel, that collector channel where we place the eye stent. Here we'll actually use Katina's four mirror. I like to sometimes verify where we place the stent as their heme coming from the lumen. And we saw in the AC it was, and if you look, that small spot of, of heme right next to the eye stent, well seated. Again, Katina's disposable line of uh, mirrors and gonio prisms are excellent. We then hydrated the wounds to create a watertight seal, remove the speculum, and that's the conclusion of the case.